Hey YouTube, this is Adam here with Retro Repairs and today's another repair video. Um, as you can see in front of me here, I've got a Sega Game Gear and I'm going to try and fix this. I picked this up on eBay for $6. Um, at that price, I really couldn't not buy it. Uh, I mean, it's 6 bucks. What am I going to do with 6 bucks? Probably going to go to somewhere and buy some crappy food or something. So this is what I got. Didn't have the, uh, the battery doors, but not a huge deal. Um, one thing I did notice, a lot of corrosion coming in here on this uh, these battery connectors. So odds are this is the problem, that it's just not getting a connection. But um, we're going to do a little bit of testing just to kind of go through it all and see what's what. So let's start with some batteries. Best part of the game gear, this is sarcasm by the way, is using six batteries to power this thing for, I don't know, three hours, maybe less. Try power it on, nothing. Just move the batteries around, still nothing. So, I'm getting no power here. I'm gonna try it though with the AC plug. Now, plug that in. This uses the same plug as a Model 2 Sega Genesis, so um, if you got one of those laying around, you can always just plug it into the wall and then, if you look at that, we've got a display. So let's throw in a game. I've got NBA Jam and Let's toss that in the machine here. Power it on, make sure that everything works. So there we go, we're getting a display. In my mail day video, I actually had the brightness turned all the way down and I failed to re realize and remember there was a brightness switch. So if you're watching that recently at all and you'll notice the screen was black, that was the problem. It was this brightness switch, but quite clearly it seems to work. Uh, I'm gonna let it boot up into the game, make sure that we've got sound. That seems to be fine. Okay, so D-pad seems to work. Number one works. And pass works. Yeah, I think we're looking good. Do the three pointers work? No, rimmed out. Anyways, so clearly works, but issue seems to be the battery terminals. So let's try just a very quick, um, try, try buff this out a bit just to see if it's a matter of it's not getting a connection to the battery. Okay, so first thing, I'm going to turn our attention to this uh, this battery compartment here, and I'm just going to use a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol just to try and scrub this up a bit. <clears throat> so, And I'm going to take a little bit of 2500 grit sandpaper and again just buff out the negative terminals here. I want to really make sure that I'm getting enough exposed metal here so that it will actually connect to the battery. Um, that is pretty bad. I might need some more grit but let's see. Just curious if my multimeter will even recognize this. So, just put a probe there and a probe there. No, that is rough. Not getting any continuity across those. So I think this is going to have to come apart. Um, I really don't think this will accomplish anything, but just do one quick test. Now 
Nothing. So let's uh, let's take this guy apart. So taking this apart is uh, kind of different. There's a couple different screws. There are some small Phillips screws that we have to remove, and those are there's one of those on, in each battery compartment. So one there, one here. And then in these other, one, two, three. Yeah, there we go. And then four more. Okay, so those are removed, but we're not quite done yet. There is one more screw at the top. And this is a special security screw, which you open with a game bit driver. So I'm gonna take that last one out and then we should be able to open up this shell. So being very careful when we lift it. There are some ribbons here. We don't want to rip those. So carefully going to extend this open and disconnect these ribbons. Where do we disconnect from the bottom? Maybe easier to go from the bottom. There we go. So, top part of the shell, what we're looking at here is the main guts of this. So, we've got the cartridge connector, we've got the uh, reflector for the backlight. This is actually a, a CFL bulb that goes through here. And then just the general circuitry. A couple notes is, is the capacitors, and those are actually down here. But these are very prone to failure for some reason. I don't know why specifically the Game Gear uses such bad capacitors, but it's almost always the case where these have to be repaired. So I'm not doing that in this video, but that is gonna be a future video for this particular system is replacing those capacitors. Um, for now, what I'm interested in is the battery connectors. So I'm gonna move the rest of the shell over and it looks to me like the battery connectors are, oh yeah, they're soldered onto place. So that's kind of a pain, but definitely dealable. So I just gotta heat up the soldering iron. <clears throat> so the really bad one was this one right here. So I wanna get that out. So all we're going to do, heat up the solder on this tab, pull away the wire, there we go. Now this should come out, we may have to straighten that tab out a little bit, and I should be able to pull it out. If it doesn't come, I can always use tweezers to try and make it. So the solder is actually a little bit too thick, so I have to try and just kind of smooth that out. Now these other two, I believe, should just pop out. You may need to do some convincing, but push that forward and slide it down. There we go, so that is out. Now we're gonna do the same for the other one here. So this is going to need to heat up. Bend that tab up a bit. And now it should slide out.
There they are. I knew I had tweezers somewhere. Or needle nose pliers, sorry. There we go. And then, once again, this little jumper here just needs to be, there's a little tab at the bottom, so you're gonna push that in and then slide it down. And that's that whole side. So the other side's actually pretty good. I'm not even gonna necessarily worry about that, but these definitely do need some attention. That's really bad. So let's grab the multimeter again. Just do a couple of continuity tests as an example. So connecting to the back on some shiny parts, I get continuity, but anywhere else, not much. So no wonder that a battery can't be read. You're supposed to get a connection from there to there and we're just not. So um, this is gonna get a vinegar bath. Okay, so I've got the parts in a bowl here and just gonna soak them completely with white vinegar. That should be plenty. And really just gonna let that sit now. Might let it sit for a couple hours even. We want it to really chew away at this rust. Um, I don't know if you can pick this up, but it's actually starting to bubble from that rusty bit. So that's a good sign. That means that the vinegar's reacting with the rust there. Um, vinegar will actually help to neutralize the process of rusting on rusty materials. So if you have something that's rusty, coat it in vinegar, let it soak. It'll stop the rust. It won't make it go away, but it'll stop it from getting worse. So that's what we're doing here. So while we're in here, I think what I'm gonna do is give the rest of this shell a cleanup treatment. So I'm gonna unscrew the boards and the shielding here and give this all a scrub. The back of it is pretty dirty. Um, you can see there's residue in there from the battery corrosion. Um, there's just dust and dirt and gunk everywhere. So get all the electronics out and give this guy a bath. So all the boards are out, last bit is getting these other um, wires out. So once again, they have to be desoldered. And then you just simply remove them. This one's a little trickier. It's got this heat shrink on it, which is actually stuck on, so I might have to cut this heat shrink off and then just put on some new heat shrink when it's uh, when the time comes. So where are my cutters? There they are. That's a lot of solder. Let's, uh, let's try and get rid of some of that, I think. Oops. Cool. So that should be good. Let's bend this straight up. And you know what, I think I'm going to add these bits into that vinegar bath just for, just as an added precaution. I mean, they're not bad, they're not really rusty, but um, why not help uh, reduce some of the oxidization that may be building there. 
there you go. So that's the back shell. Um, pretty cool, huh? Interesting that it's all brown. I've never actually opened up one of these, so um, almost looks like they painted this brown for some reason. I wonder if it's like a heat resistant coating or something. It's got an interesting texture to it, but either way, let's put that to the side and focus our attention on the front. So the front is, again, um, more of the same, just a big board for the most part. Couple screws here, which hold on the cartridge slot. <clears throat> and then a couple small screws, which hold this board into place. So this should lift straight up and come out. Be aware of this connector right under here, which goes to the speaker. And then we've just got our buttons and pads there. So let's uh, take the screws out of this and I'll flip it over and take a look at the other side where the display is. And so this is our display. Um, you'll notice it's got some crap on here, for lack of a better word. Um, I want to clean that, see if, yeah, that looks like it'll come up. So we're going to give this display a bit of a cleanup. Um, but otherwise, be careful with this ribbon connector. That's what uh, makes the display work. Um, check out these button pads for any type of oxidization. They don't look too bad, so they should be just fine, but... Um, if they are dirty at all, give them a clean, just, just some rubbing alcohol, and that should be fine. Um, I'm going to actually just put that off to the side. So these screws here actually hold the display, and this is the backlight. So these used a uh, nice power hog of a compact fluorescent bulb and this is what gave the backlight to it and has this little reflector here to make it more even. So it was, this plastic is a diffuser so that you're not getting a big imprint of a bulb. It's kind of cool, um, but that's the single reason why this takes six AA batteries to run and it doesn't last very long because you're powering a giant backlight. So there is a mod out there that replaces the backlight with an LCD screen. So it is kind of expensive though. It's about 120 bucks for that display. So um, I've been, uh, I have a hard time talking myself into spending $120 for a backlight replacement when, or for a display replacement when this whole thing cost me six bucks. Um, so yeah. I don't know, maybe you guys can talk, it in, talk me into it in the comments, but for now, it's going to stay how it is. So I'm actually going to screw the display back to the backlight, just because I don't want it flopping around and getting damaged. But that's our... Uh, board so we're going to set that also off to the side now and then just take these pads out and we're going to get this shell cleaned so you got the d-pad there we've got the start button we've got your not a and b but one and two buttons and then the speaker how does the speaker come out it actually looks like it's melted into place so that's kind of annoying Yep, I think that's the case. They, You see how there's these little posts that stick up here? Um, it looks like that was the same idea here. You see that brown spread out? I think they came through and they just melted them on so that this speaker can never really come out without uh, without uh, breaking that and then having to remelt it into place. So that means I can't soak this, but I can still give it a wash. I'm going to clean the outside shell of it, clean the inside, try and get... I wonder if I can get this lens off. Yep, 
no, not going to do that. It's uh, stuck on with adhesive, so I bet you if I take that off, it's not going to go back on. So we're going to clean the screen, clean the shell, clean the back of the shell, and then uh, check back in a while when I can try and scrub those battery contacts. All right, so this is the freshly cleaned shell, which looks a lot better. Um, there are still a lot of scratches in that on the lens, as you can see. So um, you can actually buy replacement lenses for this, where you pop the old one off, put a new one on, but I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I'm just going to give this a general clean and make sure that we can get this powered on to solve that no power issue. So we're going to begin rebuilding all the, putting all the components back in here. I'm going to continue to let those battery contacts sit in the vinegar and then once it's almost ready to go back together, we'll pull them out, clean them up, and uh, test this out. Okay, so we're going to begin with the front part of the shell. But first, I want to clean this LCD display. Um, as you can see, there's some smudges and general gunk on there. And I'm really not sure what it's all from. Um, so, because this should be covered up, so it shouldn't really be that bad. But what I'm going to do... Just going to hit it with a very, very tiny amount of um, isopropyl alcohol and a lens cleaning cloth. Try and just get this all up. You want to be very careful you're not uh, putting too much force on here. Sometimes, in this case, the old breath trick also works. There you go, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit up at the top here, but otherwise not too bad. So now with the screen clean, um, it's time to reassemble. So we're going to start with putting the buttons into place. So I'm going to start with the start button, and then the these next two buttons, the number one and two ones, you see they have these two posts. One is slightly angled. That's to uh, make sure that you're putting them in the proper way. Um, I'm not positive if it really would make a difference, but it's there, so we're going to do it. Then we're going to put these conductive pads on top of each of them. <clears throat> and over on this side, the D-pad. And you just rotate it until it sits into place nicely. So those are all set and ready to go. Next part is very important, and that's this uh, this little gasket. And this goes in like this. You want to match up the little semicircle at the top to the post at the top. And then line up these little posts here with the holes in the gasket. So it'll go just like so. That's there to help keep dust and other crap out from the front of the screen. Um, clearly didn't really work um, last time, but oh well. So we want to route this cable around these screw posts. Just like so. And then we guide the brightness wheel, I think that's brightness, into its slot and then drop the whole thing into place here. Give it a solid push down, make sure that it's sitting flat where it's supposed to be, and now we screw it in. All right, so the front's reassembled. Give all the buttons a little push, make sure that they just feel right. Um, now we can move on to the back part of the shell. So this is our back, dried up. It's looking not too bad. Um, let's flip her over and begin reassembly. So let's start with this part. This is the power switch. I'm actually going to clean that switch before it goes anywhere. So I'm going to dunk a toothbrush in some alcohol. It's a good idea just to clean the parts that you don't really have good access to before you go and hide them more. So. Just clean that switch off, make it nice and shiny there. Get rid of the dust and junk that's built up. Same with underneath here. Let's do the same thing. Now, 
Now fortunately, these pads did not corrode, so I don't have to desolder them and um, try and give them the vinegar treatment. If they did, um, it would be a little more challenging to get this going, but so far, no issue. So we just drop it in place, just like so. That should sit nicely there. Oh, we lost the power switch. So this goes just like that. Perfect. Now we're gonna screw that in. So that part's in now. Time to focus our attention to this uh, wheel here and the headphone connector. So once again, there's some more capacitors here, which um, probably should be changed. And that's gonna be a separate video. I'm gonna order some new caps and do this swap. But for now, they're going in as is. And as this is functional, but um, the, like I said, the Game Gear is notoriously bad for capacitors failing. So it's always a good idea if you're picking up a used Game Gear, um, give it a capacitor replacement. It will, it can help with sound, it can help with picture quality, it can help with really anything. They can fail anywhere and everywhere. All right, so that's that. Um, let's go take a look at those battery terminals. All right, so these have been sitting here, I don't know, maybe an hour. Let's uh, give them a good scrub and see if I can get this to look a little bit closer to this. So these terminals are actually quite bad. Um, what I did have some success with though was just rubbing it against a drywall sanding sponge. It helps to get into the grooves and expose some bare metal here so that maybe we can get a contact. So I'm gonna keep hitting this, try and see if we can make this look good. Okay, so that's a little bit better. Obviously not as good as we'd like it to be, but um, it's a start. We're gonna test, see if I can get any continuity. Problem that I think might be here is this spring. I'm hopeful that we can get a connection from the spring to the plate, but I guess we'll find out. So I'm going to do the same thing for, what was the other bad one here? Actually, they're all not too bad. So let's do some tests. Okay, so this will be the moment of truth. If I get continuity here, we should be good. Perfect. And the other one, I want to make sure that we're getting continuity from there to the tab. Also good. So, looks to me like these work. I'm going to let them sit a little bit longer, work a bit more on the rust, but they should be good to go. Uh, I'm going to take care of a few things, and then we'll reassemble it and test it out. All right, so let's, uh, let's put this all back together here. So, where are we looking? Right there, we need a single piece that will go positive, goes there. Nope. Part of the puzzle is figuring out where these all go again. There we go. So this little single piece, we're looking for a positive side. That will go just like so, I believe. Yep. And we fold that tab over. Um, that means that this right there. So this one with the negative against the flat side and the rounded positive on the right will snap in just like so. Um, This one will go right there, I think. Yep. So we may need to push this little guy out a bit so that it snaps into place, but just like, there we go. And then another single negative terminal will go right, not this one, but this one. Nope, I was... What the heck goes there? 
Yeah, I was right the first time, this guy. Oops, that'll go in there, fold that over. And then, let's see what's next. We need a single negative, that being the only one, we'll go there. And then this should be easy. Negative in the center. Need to pop this little release out so that it holds. There we go, and the last one, right there. So now, the tricky part is going to be, where do all of these go? So I believe, pretty sure they cross. So, like that. And then like, that. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to solder those back into place now. Okay, so three of those are good. Um, the last one, I need a little bit of heat shrink tubing. So, actually, I don't need a little thicker than that. That should work. So I'm going to cut off, I don't know, maybe about an inch of tubing, throw it over this wire, and now we're going to solder this wire back in place. Perfect, I'm going to let that sit and cool and then we'll move the shrink tubing over. Okay, so we do want all of these to be routed down below the posts at the bottom. So slide this tubing over top of the terminal. Um, I'm not going to really shrink it on because I want to, I'm going to come back in here, I think. So I may want to remove that at a later time, but just get it sitting in place. Same over here. Now this one, I am actually going to shrink a little bit around the bottom of the wire, just because it is pretty big. So I'm going to get my hot air gun. That's probably good. A 
you just don't want it to really slide easily. So now we should be able to plug everything together and get it working. So let's line the shell pieces up the way that they should be. Um, plug in all of the connectors. Make sure you don't forget this little uh, speaker connector. And if everything's cooperating for you, it should fit nice and flush, just like so. Perfect. And it wasn't perfect because I forgot a piece of RF shielding. Um, this is an important piece as uh, the actual cartridge is, is exposed to the inside of the shell here. So not only does it create an opportunity for dust and stuff and liquid to come in, um, heat in theory could access the cartridge as well and start to kind of deform it. So all we need to do is screw this in place and then we can put it all back together properly. So now I'm going to put that uh, security screw in the top to hold it all together, and maybe one more. Yeah, that should be good. Let's pop some batteries in. And then my copy of Jam. And fingers crossed. Uh, where's my brightness wheel? There we go. Sega. Perfect. So it looks like we're good. So that was kind of just a clean and uh, getting those contacts cleaned up, but not a difficult job if you have a Sega Game Gear that's not working nicely. So um, really appreciate you watching this video. I hope that you're able to revive a Sega Game Gear you might have here. Um, Thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to like the video, leave me a comment below, and let me know what you think. I'm hoping to do those capacitors in an upcoming video. Um, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All of those really help my videos get more views, and more views means more videos for you. So thanks a lot, and we will see you next time.